about I'm standing up for this one I'm not going through my studio either so my heaters are kind of blowing making some noise so please bear with me but this is the video I was talking about I was gonna make describing my entire guitar rig this video might be long but it's definitely gonna be informative and it's gonna answer I hope all the questions that people have asked me about my my latest guitar rig build so <laughs> and i'm just winging it just doing some wingy stuff wingy wingy so all right let's just dive right into it we're gonna i'm gonna let's see how i'm gonna do this i'm gonna take it from the, the guitar through my entire signal path and explain everything that's going on and why i got this uh, rig the way I got it and how I built it. This is the big rig if you can see it. I'm gonna put up a picture I took of this rig. You should be seeing it right now. So that's the rig, um, my big rig. Um, it's actually two rigs in one, um, but I'm using this entire rig. Uh, this Saturday we're playing at, at a club in Waukesha called the Q Club, Waukesha, Wisconsin. I use this rig uh, Two, two Saturdays ago and it performed flawless and I couldn't be happier with the way it sounds. Um, these heads, these Marshall Ground Zero modified heads, um, wow, I haven't even looked at other amplifiers. Normally I'll be online, you know, perusing, hey, what's out there? Oh, it looks interesting. I haven't had any desire to even look at any other amplifiers right now. I'm so completely satisfied and happy with these amp the, the amplifiers, the Ground Zero Modified Marshalls. So... So, all right, so let's dive right in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera angle. I'm going to start with uh, a shot of the pedal board and explain everything that is going on. So let's watch. <laughs> Alright, so what we are looking at here is from my guitar, I, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing here so I'm going to just try and wing it, but from my guitar we go into the uh, wireless unit. Um, it's that Sure UL whatever pedal wireless. I've had it for a lot of years. It's never failed me. It's a great unit. So let me put the guitar down for right now. So from the wireless unit, and this is called the Chicken Frog. There's a long story behind the Chicken Frog. From the wireless unit, I go into my Polytune tuner, and the reason I have that is because I've learned, and you know, technology has changed, so um, it could be just me in my head, but I used to, long time ago, starting out, me and whoever, another guitar player or a bass player, it seemed like whenever we had different tuners, there are there was a chance that it could be off. I don't know. It could be all in my head. I don't know. So the reason I got that tuner is because that's the exact same tuner my bass player has. So we're both using the exact same tuner. It's just a thing that I've done for a long time. So from the wireless unit into the tuner, into my whammy, and I'm going to try and do this off to the side here. Now, the right side of the whammy is you can 
it's half step increments. Pitch up, pitch down. I use this because the band I'm playing in right now, our singer, she likes to kind of switch things as far as what key we do the songs in. So instead of having like a, a, a ton of guitars, I use this and I'll just drop the tuning. For example, so right now I'm in standard tuning. This is straight in. Now when we play uh, Panama, I go a half step down and now we're at. And, um, and one song we play, I go two whole steps down. It's a song by uh, Queens of the Stone Age called Nobody Knows. I think it's called Nobody Knows, No One Knows, something like that. Anyhow, he's down that far down. He's got his guitar tuned, so instead I use that, and it's... And then, so that's that side. This side is the, the classic whammy stuff. And I only use it, the only thing I use it for is when I'm going um, octave up to do kooky sound effects. Normally I'll have on my long delay and I'll do kooky stuff like... Uh, So that's all I'm using that for. From there, we go into my wah. And this is, uh, I forgot the model number, but it's the spring activated. So when I step on it, it turns on. Let me get out of this. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. So, yeah. I don't use it that much, but you know, you gotta have a waff if you're a rock guitar player. It's just, it's written in uh, the manual. Uh, I think it's page 17, I'm not sure. So, there's my wah. Now, here's where it gets a little kooky. From my wah, I go into this Lily P split. Um, I'm running two P splits with this big rig. So, from here, into the P split, then I send my direct line of the P split, P split into the Fractal FM9. Now, I could stop right there, and that's like my small guitar rig. This pedal board into a Fryat 292 power amp with a stereo, an orange 4x12 cabinet, cabinet that I hardwired for stereo. So when we're playing small venues, I just bring this, the power amp, and a 4x12. But for the big shows, so I got the one line coming out of the P-Split going into the Fractal. The other line is going into my RG-16, my RJM RG-16. This is where things get a little kooky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera angle and show you a little bit more of the rack. Let's watch. All right, I'm back. So. From the pedal board, it goes into the RG16. Now, this, I use this for two different things. It's got the loops on this side and the function stuff on this side. So I have, go into the RG16, then I have my pedals in my loop, loops. Loop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got two White Sands, uh, they're like a, a, a light boost overdrive pedal. Uh, this one is on the boost side, this one is on the overdrive side. They're both set up the same way. 
it's because the gain on my amplifiers I turned down I, I mean there's so much gain on tap with these heads I wouldn't need these pedals at all but I like I like it when I'm running the gain a little bit lower on the amps so when I have these pedals off I can uh, it clean up you know the guitar cleans up a little bit uh, nice where it's almost like a, a clean sound then I got my old 70s MXR Phase 90 this is an, uh, an original vintage uh, DOD 440 envelope filter the Boss Slicer pedal obviously the EVH MXR flange and then an old DOD flanger that I really like that I use mostly just for sound effects let me let me dial something up with a couple of these pedals so so this is what it sounds like straight into the amp with all the pedals shut off <laughs> Here's my DOD 440 envelope filter. Um, here's my, I call it my eruption uh, preset. This has got the MXR Phase 90 on. <laughs> Um, now here's uh, we'll get into the left side of the RG16 it also acts as my function switch where I the, the cabinets have uh, two different functions that you are, that are switchable the uh, a low gain high gain and that's got two different master volumes I'm only using the one master volume on each head, but I do use this low gain. So now I'm on the low gain of the heads with no pedals in front of it. So that's 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 why I I have the two different uh, boost pedals. One is for rhythm. One is for the leads. Now here's my slicer pedal. If you know anything about the Boss slicer pedal, I've yet to find somewhere in the band a scenario where I could use it. But it just it's so cool. <laughs> That's my slicer. And let's see. All right. Well, oh, here we go. My MXR flanger I use when I need a flanger. We do Barracuda. <laughs> Um, so now, so I said what the function switches over here are basically running the two things that I use to switch with the head. Now, from the RG16, I go into another Lily P split because if you're going to run stereo, if you're going to run two heads, I used to try using a pedal like a stereo chorus pedal, and it just seemed like I would have all kinds of crazy. Uh, ground issues using a pedal like that. I know other people do it. I don't know for some reason with me I, I it always seem to have issues. So running a stereo rig 
So from the RG16, I go into the Lili P split. I send one line in the one head, the other line into the other head. Um, and then both heads share the fractal axe effects too that I'm using just for effects. So no modeling, nothing coming out of there. Just for my effects, delays, chorus, flange, reverb, that type of stuff. So now, the reason I have the head rush speaker here on the left side is because there are certain things that I play where the big rig part of this shuts off and I'm just using the FM9 because both of these cabinets get mic'd up. Uh, each cabinet, the top two speakers are UK made Celestian Greenbacks. The bottom two speakers are black, UK made black framed vintage 30s, which I find to be the best sounding vintage 30s. And it's the vintage 30s on the bottom that get mic'd up on each cab. But then I also run my two lines off my FM9 directly into the PA system. That's why I got the head rush as a monitor because for like my clean sounds I'll use uh, now this is just the FM9 and that's why I have the head rush as a monitor for a, a kooky thing we do I use this as an intro back now I'm using the, the this big rig and the FM9 shuts down so there are certain things that I use the FM9 for um, here's another one of them I use this kooky thing uh, I use this as an intro we do one way or another by Blondie and I use this little intro thing I learned this for a Halloween show we did but I, I liked it so I, I do it every time we play one way or another So that's why I have the FM9 with the head rush monitor speaker. I, I, you know, I could get away with not bringing the head rush speaker and relying on the sound engineer to pipe me through the monitors. But I like to have, I'm a control freak. I like to have control over all of my stuff. So I think I, I think I described everything in this setup and obviously the, the let, let's take a look at the amplifiers let's watch so here here's the uh, here's the heart of this beast these are my two Marshall JMP 2203s that I had modified by Jeremy at Ground Zero Amp Works. It, these are done with what he calls his Moab Plus mod, the mother of all bombs mod. This one's an 81, this one's a 78. Um, they sound damn near identical. And these are, these are my new babies, man, I love them. And I got lots of shows booked throughout the summer season, outdoor festivals and such. This is, this is what I'm bringing, so. Uh, if you wanna know more about what, what's going on with these amps, I would say go to Jeremy's YouTube page, Ground Zero Amp Works. He goes into, I'm pretty sure he used this one on one of his videos. It didn't, it was in its original head shell, black head shell. These are both replacement head shells that I bought from a company called Sour Mash Guitar Cabs. But he, does a deep dive into the into the head. It was right after he had modified this one. So 
Check out Jeremy's YouTube page for Ground Zero Amp Works. So these are the heads. Let's, uh, let's back the camera up and uh, I think we're about to wind up this video. Let's watch. Oh, uh, one of my uh, one of my kooky effects that I got on my pedal board I totally forgot to show you it's the uh, the electro harmonics string nine I use that as uh, for the intro I, I do the mr. Crowley half of mr. Crowley intro before we play crazy train and it sounds something like this So I think, yeah, that covers it. I think that covers it pretty good. Oh, wait, let's check out my, uh, hang on a second. Oh, I don't have it programmed, my DOD flanger. I was using it for some recording. So yeah, here's, uh, here's my guitar rig. And my chorus is coming from the, the Fractal Axe Effects 2. I use the Dimension One chorus pedal that's inside of that, and that's that's pretty much on all the time. So yeah, that's, uh, I think I got the gist of it. So that is the rig that I'm using, that I just built, put together, all of that. So um, if you guys out there have any other questions about this, just ask me and I'll try and answer them. But I'm pretty sure I have everything covered and I will, as I'm editing it, I'll probably, if I miss something, I'll be like, oh, damn it. And then I'll, I'll put it in the description or something like that. I, I really don't know how to utilize all of that stuff, so. That's the guitar rig, Netty Stands, 2024. And, and as how I like to end all of my videos, late.